Hi, I'm Skeleton Notes, or better known, I guess, as Robin Tynan, and I'm a watercolour artist. And I frequently do um, a combination of abstract water paint, uh, watercolour painting with ink drawing. Um, so I thought we'd do, I'd talk you through the painting process of one of these today, and this is going to be part of my skeletal, skeletal series, um, which hopefully I'll be adding to over the next few months. Um, the actual ink drawing itself had been done the day before and it's just off to one side while I'm mixing up some paint because I didn't want to splash paint everywhere. So I am starting off um, by mixing up on my very messy, um, <laughs> my very untidy palette here. This is my travel palette but it also serves as my studio palette because I don't have a um, dedicated studio palette, so it's very messy. So I'm starting out by mixing up a grey using ultramarine blue and burnt umber. These are both um, core paints, I think. I think all the half pans currently in this palette are from core. And um, I want to just create a really nice soft grey, which is very slightly blue leaning. Um, and you'll just see that I am mixing that together and going back and forth with the color the colors to um get get the tone i want and i think this is sometimes referred to as jane's gray after the artist her uh, jane blundell um, who popularised it, who uses it frequently, but it is also, you know, just a common mix of two neutralising colours. And I just grabbed my sketchbook, um, which unfortunately is off camera, um, and I'm just testing out the mix to try and get the balance right and make sure it's the tone I'm looking for. So the painting I'm going to be working on today is um, a sacrum. The sacrum is... Um, a collection of fused vertebrae at the very base of your spine. It's what connects your spine to your pelvis. Um, and it's also where if we were a species that grew a tail, um, attached to the sacrum is called the coccyx and from there that is where your tail bones would be. But the sacrum is uh, a big chunky bone. It's technically technically made by several large vertebrae which are fused together and you'll see some of that in the shape. Um, as I say I drew this the day before in pencil and then in ink using um, a glass dip pen and Diatramentus document black ink. And I wanted to give that a full 24 hours to dry because the application of um, ink with a dip pen can sometimes be quite heavy and take a little while to dry um, and you'll see that I still have a couple of issues when we get started in a moment. Um, okay so the way I create these sort of abstract paintings is I do a drawing and I think about what feelings, what emotion, what thoughts I have connected to that. Now I have a veg very visual way of thinking um, to the extent that I can visualise moods and thoughts and concepts. And I know that's not something everybody does, that's not how everybody's mind works, but it is how my mind works. So I think about what colours I associate with it, what shapes, what um, edges, are they sharp edges or soft edges? And some of the influence with this painting, and you'll see when I start, is to do with the fact that um, the sacrum or the part where it, it joins with the pelvis can be a source of pain to me, either dull aches or sharp pains. Um, I have a couple of chronic illnesses. I have um, Eladanos syndrome, which is um, includes joint type and mobility, and you can get a lot of joint inflammation and pain included in that. Um, I also have 
um, ME, which is a result of a long-term Lyme disease infection. And that can also cause joint pain and inflammation. So it, it's quite a common theme when I'm drawing body parts that I conceptualise them with a bit of pain involved. So here I've just been mixing up um, Holbein Mineral Violet, which is a colour which has both some really nice cool blues to it and also a nice rosy undertone. Um, I can't remember the pigment exactly, but I will put that on screen for you to see. Um, and as I say, that's a Holbein paint as opposed to a core paint. So I'm starting off with the sketch. As you can see, it's been completed and I'm just putting a light wash of water over it. I don't want this to be completely saturated, just a little bit of water to get going. Now I mentioned issues with the ink. Um, because of the heavy deposits and the way the ink works, even though it um, is waterproof, it stains the paper so it's not going to ever completely disappear, you do sometimes get a little bit of the very top coat of that ink moving um, when it's in contact with water. It doesn't dry completely hard. This isn't a and this isn't a shellac or an acrylic based ink. This is um, actually a fountain pen ink. That means when I'm putting this water over, um, it is shifting it and causing some grey streaks. Now, with other paintings, that might be a real issue because I don't want grey smudges through it if I'm doing something nice and bright or lively. Um, but in this case, it's not unfortunate because I am, in fact, using grey paint. Um, so I'm just making sure it's wet. Dabbing off a little bit of the excess water, as I say, I don't want it completely sopping wet, but I do want, um, I do want a nice coat. I was also dab uh, sort of lifting up some of the worst of the ink smudges as well, just so they weren't distracting. And I'm taking this flat brush, a one inch flat brush, um, which I don't often use for painting actually, it's, it's a bit unusual, um, but it just felt right at the time. And I really liked the idea of going in with these very bold, distinct, straight lines. Um, you can see I'm putting them in quite vigorously, quite actively, sometimes quite conscientiously when I think a line needs to go somewhere in particular, but also just letting the brush strokes do the work, um, letting the amount of moisture on the brush do the work. And I'm keeping sounds odd obviously I'm using a watercolor and I'm loading up with a wet paint but I'm still keeping it relatively dry um, for this type of brush which means you do get interesting streaks and brush marks which sometimes is not desirable but in this case is quite um, useful and it created a really interesting texture which I liked so I just went back and forth a couple of times balancing out those layers um, and as it started to dry a little bit. It meant I could put layers on top so that you were getting sort of a crisscross uh, pattern. Now I'm going in with the mineral violet and I am just starting to go around the edges and fill in any voids. So because of the way a sacrum is formed, it's got holes in it which you can see straight through. So I wanted to make sure the purple was there as if it was giving a purple glowing background. Um, and then I started to go around the edges and I wanted to initially sort of soften off those edges a bit as if I was giving it that glow um, and, but I was struggling with it here it wasn't quite giving me the feeling I wanted so I went back and forth a couple of times I wanted the most saturated to colour to be closest to the bone and then to soften and fade out um, further away and I started putting in sort of short flicked lines feathering it out from the edge um, and again those those stronger flick, flicked out lines kind of mirror the strong lines of the grey but while still being a bit softer so I just trace around the edge um, putting in the slightly stronger saturation of colour in the places where I want it and as you can see this is where I've started 
flicking out the edges um, rather than a more traditional softening off. And that's partly because I didn't want to disturb the grey underneath, but as I say, it helped to give some of that feeling to it. Now, unfortunately, my um, phone memory ran out um, before I'd finished this, but I did carry on this process for a little bit longer, um, just going back in where I could, adding more saturation, softening it off with those flicking lines, um, lifting colour where I wanted it to be lighter, adding colour where I wanted it to be darker. Um, and even though you don't see footage of me finishing this, um, you will see the end result shortly. And we can just talk about how I finished it off. Okay, so this is um, while the paint was still wet. Um, you can see I'd put in that flicking and softening off of the edges and you can see where I'd lifted out some of the um, concentrated pigment in order to kind of give a bit of a glow in those voids in the um, inner of the bone itself. I also opted to add in a bit of a purple paint spatter. I just thought it needed something else to help bring it together um, bring the colours together and kind of give that mood and the paint splatter really helped with that. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed that video, liked watching the painting process, and uh, maybe understood a little bit about what's going on in my head when I do them. Um, if you do like my artwork, do like my video, then please hit that like button. You can also support me on Ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash skeleton notes, um, either with a one-off tip or an ongoing um, subscription. And anybody who supports me on Kofi um, will see behind the scenes photographs, um, see sort of um, work in progress pictures, and a little bit more chat about what I'm planning on, and my thoughts on various pieces as well. So, yep, yeah, I hope you like this, and of course, as I say, please support if you can.